What's up, little babies? Welcome back to another video. Today, we'll be recapping season two, episode three of P-Valley. The name of the episode is called Dirty Dozen. And let's get right into the description. Keyshawn and Lil Murder embarks on a new adventure. Meanwhile, Mercedes ventures into uncharted territory. Now, if y'all know me, I do not like to recap the entire um, show. I like to point out certain things that was that made the show go. You know, that made the show that was giving P Valley. You know what I'm saying? So the episode opens up with Roulette giving her best dance of her life to this thug ass nigga that's sitting in this king chair. And all of a sudden, he come out and was like, I want to see your face. I want to see your mask. Take your mask off. Let me see them lips. Because, y'all, he asking for head, y'all. He was asking for head. So, eventually, she was like, yeah, you know what? Even though Uncle Clifford said, if you a hoe, you're going to have to hit that dough. But she said, for a brick, she going to break that rule. And then nigga gave her a big-ass stack out of his pocket. I know for a fact that was about five wrecks. So, like I said in the beginning, I want to get into the key points of this show. First of all, let's talk about Mercedes. Mercedes is the new mistress, you guys. Um, I love how she gave the wife and the husband the Mercedes experience at once. And I love how the wife was like, she was intrigued. At first, she was thinking, oh, this is gonna just she's just another hoe. She's just going to be on some hoe shit. She's just going to be uh, just trying to take my man from me, not trying to involve me in the bed. But after she see after the wife seen the Mercedes experience, the the wife was like, "Oh yeah, I need some of Mercedes in my life." So eventually, when it was time for Mercedes and the husband to have sex, basically the wife jumped in too. She wanted to get involved as well. You know what I'm saying? That turned her the fuck on. And the fact that Mercedes was complimenting her on her paintings, on her photographs, and her work and stuff like that. She felt like, okay, yeah, you, you know what? Mercedes might be a good girl. She might be, she might not be like the rest of these girls around here. So she ended eventually gave her a chance. But I love how they incorporated the NDAs and the contracts because we all need to start learning more about contracts and NDAs. These people in this industry, in the industry, they know about this paperwork. They throw this paperwork around to all these girls when they go to parties, when they have sex with girls. They don't want people discussing what they talk about. So they throw out these NDAs, which is actually is actually pretty cool because she got a contract on what they're going to do, how he's going to pay her, where she's going to live. And then eventually, hopefully, she can get her daughter. Let's get into the daughter situation, Terika. Um, this, this hits home because I feel like my, I, well, for a fact, y'all don't know this about me, but my kids were taken away and they're with my uncle and, um, and I wonder if he's going through the same thing that they're going through as far as, as the auntie, as far as like, they're getting tired of the kids, they're stressed out, they're over there drinking, doing drugs because they can't handle the kids. I wonder if that's what my uncle is doing. But back to P-Valley. Um, yeah, Terika and her auntie part, that hits home. Um, on my last video, I know that I said that. I said that um, they better call uh, the court so her auntie to come pick them up. Because they alienated Mercedes for years when it came down to trying to take care of her daughter. And in my case, I fought tooth and nail for my child. You know what I'm saying? For my kids. And nothing still happened. I had $50,000 in a bank when I went to court. And they still didn't give me my kids. So, I know exactly what Mercedes is going through. And on the AT part, if she knew she couldn't take care of them kids, she should... She knew damn well she should have just uh, called Mercedes and been like, look, I can't take care of her no more. You need to uh, step up, be a parent, do what you got to do, and and take it from there. Now, let's get into Lil Murder and Miss Mississippi. They are a real uh, dynamic duo. Like, seriously, I love this couple. I love the way where well, they're not a couple, but I like the way they they're teamed up. I love the way Miss Mississippi dance on that pole, baby. She be really working it. She must was the top dancer at the audition when they first started P-Valley because, baby, she is giving it all. She is giving P-Valley. You know what I'm saying? And I love the song 
that she was dancing to little murder song. Champagne, campaign, champagne, campaign, champagne, campaign. Yes, bitch. I love that. And I love how he is still sensitive to the fact that he still cares about Uncle Clifford. I don't care what nobody says, but you know what? Why is it that all of our black men got to play little gay roles just to, to be front and center on a show or a movie? I don't like that, but you got to do what you got to do nowadays. If I had to kiss a girl or do something like that to be in the show business, I probably would do it too. You know, if the check big enough, you know, and most likely them checks be nice, a pretty nice size. But I, but I don't like the fact that they riding in this fucking hearst. It is so fucking ugly and cringy, cringy to me. And like I said in my trailer breakdown, you cannot take these niggas nowhere. Everywhere you take black people, everywhere it's a crowd of black people, I, I stay away from because eventually somebody's going to get shot, beat up. You step on a bitch toe, it's going to be a fight. Like literally, I was in a club one day and stepped on this. I know I, 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 I hit the shoulder to shoulder to this girl. All I know, her and three more girls in the bathroom trying to fight me. For what, girl? So, Lil Murder thinking his people that just got out of prison was going to be a security guard and protect them. He the main motherfucker out there starting shit. Nigga, you just got out. You ain't been out for 24 hours and you about to get locked back up. That's why you can't take niggas nowhere. And that's why I don't fuck around with niggas. But, um, I'm loving the tour, y'all. I'm loving the tour. They went from the new oil. They went from, they went from the N.O., to Jackson, Mississippi, to Arkansas, all these places I've been. I am from Louisiana. You heard me? You feel me? So I know exactly. I know exactly how hyped the party was. I know how exactly hyped everything was when it came down to that tour. And I'm loving everything about it. Like episode three, it stepped up. You feel me? It stepped up a little bit. I'm fucking with it. And um. What else did that happen? What else didn't happen, y'all? Um, y'all should make this like a little podcast or some. Everybody stalked out when it come down to Miss Mississippi and Lil Murder on that little dozen tour. So as Autumn and Uncle Clifford, they were sitting down talking at the bar outside about who was going to get what percentage of the club. So they made a deal to where Autumn is going to get 69%. And Uncle Clifford is going to get 31% if they do sell the club. Because they're thinking about selling it for $10 million. If they could sell it for $10 million, they're going to split it down. They're going to split it down. They're going to bust that money down. And they're going to um, eventually sell the club, y'all. You know, if, if, if it come down to it. So they're just trying to get their plans in order on whether or not they're going to you know, sell the club or if they're going to stay. They don't know what's going to happen with that casino after the votes get, uh, after everyone vote on the casino. So, hopefully we can see a little bit more when it comes down to that. Now, I have to give credit what credit is due. These two ladies got on that stage and they shut shit down, bro. Russian, Russian roulette. Baby, her and her knife. And whispers her her coke and her dreams and her spirits and shit she be seeing. Did y'all? Oh, I don't know if y'all seen, but remember when Mercedes kicked out? I saw this on TikTok last night. Remember when Mercedes kicked out Autumn, and Autumn went and stayed at the Pink that one night. Did y'all see when she was leaving out of the? Um, room on the cameras on the cameras it shows you like the cameras and like the parts of the club it shows Montavious spirit y'all he had just popped up on the camera I don't know if y'all saw that or not but I'm just saying and I think Whisper she knew what was going on or she felt it that something had happened in that room but yeah y'all need to go back and watch episode 2 so you can see that part but um these two ladies, they got on the stage and they shut shit down for real, for real. Like, I was not expecting that. I was expecting some shit show, but this was better than Mercedes' experience, to be real. And damn, Mercedes, you got some competition, baby girl. That's all I got to say. But yeah, y'all, I think this is going to be the end of my recap. I pointed out everything that I liked about the show. 
I'm not gonna recap it from the beginning.